All right, welcome to part two of computer hardware. All right, so it's been a while and your computer is starting to slow down and it can't keep up with the things that you're trying to do. So you decide that you're going to purchase a new one. There's some questions that you need to ask yourself. Do I need to use software that requires specific platform? That is, uh, do you want a Mac basically, or maybe an IBM based machine? <clears throat> Does the computer need to be compatible with other devices I own that are used uh, for a particular platform? Was the last one that I had a uh, IBM based or not? Hardware, do I require specific hardware to perform intended tasks? How much data and information do I plan to store on the computer? Is the hard drive going to be large enough to hold all the information you need? Or do you need to purchase some additional external drives or maybe internal drives that you can mount yourself? You need to also take a look at the specifications. Will the tasks I perform or software I want to run require certain hardware specifications? That is, do you have enough memory maybe to even run a particular program? Maybe it requires a large amount of memory. Form factor, will I be using the computer in one location or will I need to be mobile? If you need to be mobile, you know you need to start looking at laptops. If, uh, if what you want to do is work from a desktop, then you can set it up that way. Add-on devices, what additional devices will I need to perform my intended tasks? So there's a lot to be considered. And also, you have a few other things that you need to look at. What size processor should you get? Do you need a powerhouse or do you need something that's not quite as powerful? Uh, the, uh, different memory requirements. How much RAM do you need? Do you need four, 32, 64, 128? You just have to decide. Just because you're going up in uh, memory size doesn't mean that your computer needs all of that, okay? If you're going to be doing high-end gaming, 32 gig is probably all you really need. Now, I know some folks that put in 128, and it's a waste. Uh, quite often, not even all of the RAM gets used. But I guess to make you feel better, you can, uh, you can load it up. But now if you're running CAD programs, you're going to need every bit of that RAM. So it just depends on what software you're running on it. Different storage requirements. Add the storage requirements for each program or add what you need to use. If you need to, maybe you only need a, a few uh, terabytes of, uh, of uh, storage space, you can mount that as uh, internal hard drives. But if you really need to load up quite a bit, and if you're like me, I have a lot of photos and they're very large, so I have to have external drives in order to uh, be able to control all of that. And then there's the other differing hardware requirements. In some cases, identify the program and or app, the greater uh, requirements and select a computer that at least meets or exceeds the requirements. All righty. All right, so some of the output uh, 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 devices that you have, you want to experiment with the input devices. I'm sorry, input and output. Experiment with the output devices. Explain how to install uh, computer hardware. We're going to cover all of these. So some input devices that you have is, say, the keyboard, a pointing device, such as a mouse or touchpad or trackball. Uh, don't see too many trackballs out there, but I think they still do exist and touch screen, multi-touch screens. When it comes to uh, experiment with the input devices, you have pen or a stylus that you can use, a digital pen, you have your microphone, of course. There's cameras with webcams, scanners, which you, uh, you can hook up to your machine. And then there's game controllers, such as joysticks, game pads, dance pads, wheels, motion sensing controllers. There's all kinds of devices that you can have as an input. 
Now, some of the output devices that you have could be speakers, headphones, uh, projectors, voice synthesizers, uh, printers, of course, laser printers, <clears throat> I'm sorry, inkjet printers, uh, multifunction devices, okay, mobile and plotters, and 3D uh, projection. How to install computer hardware. As far as the installation goes, you need an ideal location. Check for all necessary components, make sure everything's there, and it's free from damage. Connect all components and accessories, then connect the power and turn on your computer. Follow the on steps, plug and play. Most devices these days come as plug and play. If they do require some kind of specialized software that needs to be loaded, it typically will come with the, uh, the device and it's usually gonna be on a DVD or CD, something that uh, will allow you to uh, run it after it's been installed. And you need to measure to make sure that you are getting the speeds that you need. There are websites out there which will actually test your processor speed. Uh, you, they have a clock speed test. Processor clock speed measures the speed at which it can execute instructions. A bus width or word size, the bus width determines the speed at which data travels and also referred to as the word size. And then there's benchmark testing. This is what you're testing against. A test run by a library, a library, by a, a laboratory or other organization to determine the processor speed and other performance factors. Benchmarking tests uh, compare similar systems performing identical tasks. Troubleshooting hardware problems, common hardware problems. Okay, device doesn't turn on. First thing you want to do is check to see if it's plugged in. Battery issues. Maybe your battery's draining too quickly. Do you have a short? Has it started to catch fire? <laughs> that could be that could be a problem. Computer issues, a series of beeps when turned on. That's during that post test. Remember we were talking about that? If you get a series of beeps, it's going to tell you what's, uh, what the issue is that it has. But it's done in beeps, so you'll have to look it up. Operating system does not run. If the operating system doesn't run, uh, pretty much your PC is not going to run. So the first thing that you need to do is find out why you're getting some type of indication that says, I'm not, I'm not going to run for you. Monitor doesn't display. Check to make sure that it's plugged in. Sometimes the plugs can work their way loose. Uh, then check to see if, whether or not it displays just, uh, maybe it'll display the BIOS test. You need to make sure that it doesn't, that it does show something. If it's not showing anything, then there's an issue. Keyboard, mouse does not work. Sometimes there's a conflict because they all have ports that they have to run out of. Sometimes there's a conflict because you've plugged something in new and it's taking up the spot of where your keyboard or your mouse was. So you need to check to make sure that uh, they're not stepping on each other. Common hardware problems. Wet keyboard no longer works. Okay, so let's say that you do spill something in your keyboard. Here's the best thing for you to do. Unplug it, take it over to a sink. Let's say there was a soda that you spilled in it, okay? Take it over to a sink or someplace else and wash it out, okay? After you've washed it, hang it somewhere to dry, and let it dry, I mean dry, for at least four days to make sure that there's no water left in it, okay? And it will probably work after that. But if you leave it plugged in and it's wet, it's gonna short out. And that ends the, the life of your keyboard. Speakers don't work. Uh, I would check to make sure one, that they're plugged in. And two, if they are plugged in, make sure that you actually have sound coming out. Plug something else into uh, maybe a headset into the output and check to make sure that there is uh, some type of sound coming out. 
the hard drive makes noise. If the hard drive is starting to make noise, plan on replacing it because hard drives are not to make uh, grinding sounds or any kind of uh, uh, whistling sounds, things of that sort. You're going to have problems. Fan issues. If you hear it rustling or it sounds like there's a bag of rocks being spun around, you're going to need to replace your, uh, your power supply because that's normally the fan that you're going to hear. These days, they don't put fans too often on the uh, CPUs anymore. So if you're hearing noise coming from the fan, it's very likely that your power supply has gone bad. Unless it's an external hard drive with, uh, with a fan, then you know that your hard drives are going to get too hot. And if they get too hot, they cease to stop. They cease to work. Uh, the, the main point is, is if you have hard drives, you want to keep them as cool as possible. Cannot read from the optical disc. Chances are there's another issue. Maybe you've broken the cable and you need to replace it. So I wouldn't toss it out with the dishwater. I would first check to make sure that the cable is still good. So I would buy a replacement cable and test that. If that works, then you know that uh, there's another issue that's going on. It's very likely then your optical drive is gone. And at this point, I'm gonna end this uh, lesson and we have one more set of slides to go through uh, for part three. So I'll see you on part three.